Welcome back, y'all. Hopefully this is one of many of my videos you have viewed. If not, take the time to view some more of them, especially if you like looking at guns, revolvers in particular, automatics, mouse guns, all that fun stuff. This is another desktop review. I'm not going to shoot this beautiful gun. Uh, this is just something for us just to meander at for a few minutes and amuse over the history of it. But uh, the Ruger Single Six. These came out in the beautiful year of 1953, June of 53, if I remember right. And um, they've been around ever since. Now, they typically make these with a long rifle cylinder. This one is a long rifle cylinder, but usually, I think often you could buy it with a Magnum cylinder, 22 Magnum cylinder. And the Magnum cylinder will come in a small little red bag like a felt bag or something along the lines of that and sorry about that <laughs> nothing like slapping your camera around when you're trying to do a couple of good shots but yeah this is one that uh, my son had for a while i i grew up with a single six and i'm ashamed to say uh here a few years back the times were pretty tight and had some vet bills come in and i actually had to let it go and i did like that single six that I had. I do like this one better. The one I had, I think, was a six inch or six and a half inch barrel. This particular one is the four, four and a half inch barrel. Let's just take a, yeah. Well, I guess they would technically call this the four and a half inch barrel. Um, and there's something kind of cool this about this one. I'll show you all here in a second. But Again, these were made, start started being made in 1953, and we're going to zoom in and take a good old peeks at it. Now you'll see this one says new model. Well, what that means is this one was made in 1973 or later, and we'll show you for sure. And uh, let me confirm with you guys too first. This gun is empty. Sorry to zoom in and show it to you, but what happened in 1973? You see that little bar that picks up sticking up right there? When you pull the trigger, that bar lets the hammer push that firing pin and it pushes the firing pin through. This one's got such tight action, you can barely see it in there, right above my thumbnail. See how I want to let up the trigger, that firing pin block back, came back. What that did is that allows you to carry this gun fully loaded with six rounds, and you can have the hammer resting on a live round. It's called a transfer bar safety. And so in 1973, and this is going off of memory on these, y'all. If, if, if I make a mistake on the dates, I apologize. You can put it down in the comments and yell at me. But after 1973, they started calling them the new model. And that means it does have the transfer, transfer bar safety. So let's take a look at this one. And this is before they started putting this stupid, I think it's the stupid, the... Um, the uh, read the safety manual warning on it and you can tell this one you know unfortunately it had a kind of a rough life well, just even maybe even a little bit of very very light pitting right there and i think one of the grips on this if i remember right has got yeah there's a chip pretty good chip in one of the grips And it's got a little uh, little chigger bite right here. I might actually touch that up at some point. Now this one does have the adjustable rear safety. Now normally you could uh, you could, you could email Ruger, give them this serial number. They'll tell you what year it was made. But on this one you don't have to. And this is why. Made the 200th year of American liberty. Now those young folks among us may get confused on what that means. That means this was made during the United States Bicentennial, which was 1976. I remember for years, my mom, anytime she got a Bicentennial quarter, she would take it and throw it in her little mason jar or whatever. Uh, full of those. And when my mom passed on, she had a lot of bicentennial quarters sitting floating around. But yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, there was an old boy actually the other day on the, uh, one of the gun trader sites. I frequent Texas gun trader that had a, uh, had a Mark I, a Ruger Mark I, Pittsburgh Mark I that was marked with that. 
um, 200th year of, of American liberty. I think that makes this pretty special. I don't know why. And this poor thing, I need to spend about an hour or two and get this thing cleaned really good at some point. I just got it in trade for my son here not too long ago. And uh, it's just been kind of... I wiped her down real good, of course, with some uh, silicone or some ballastol when I first got it, but it needs a little bit of TLC. I might be able to get some 4 aught steel wool and clean up that hammer a little bit. Maybe clean up this barrel, clean up this barrel a little bit. But man, let me tell you, in today's, in today's market, you see a lot of the Wranglers and you see a lot of the Heritage uh, single actions. now. They're both fine guns. I'm not a big fan of the Heritage because I don't like that silly safety they put on them. Uh, for some reason, that just irks me. Um, I do like the Wranglers. The Wranglers now are a little bit smaller than the single sixes. Uh, I don't remember the actual scale, but I'm wanting to say they are like... One of y'all tell me in the comments. 15 16th scale... Or I know it's not so little as like three quarter. Maybe it's like seven tenths or something like that, scaled down from the uh, from the single six. But to me, this is a gun that you can make memories with. This is a gun I can take out, you know, blue steel and walnut. Uh, take out plinking with one of the grandsons, you know, loaded up with some shorts even or something like that, or just some plain old target loads. Don't have to worry about any jams or loading mags or any of that good stuff. Just take it out and have a good time with blue steel and walnut. I tell you, you know, I've said that to many friends of mine and people who know I'm a, I'm a gun nut type guy. You know, when I want to shoot a gun for pleasure, to have fun, really give me blue steel and walnut. You know, I don't an old lever action, old twenty two like this. Uh, you know, a Smith and Wesson revolver of some type. Um, when I need a gun, because I need a gun, I'm reaching for a Glock, folks. That's all there is to it. I understand fully the utility of today's modern polymer striker fired pistols and all that stuff. They're very fine guns. They're good shooting guns. But sometimes you just want something nostalgia in your hands. I grew up shooting one of these with my dad. Uh, this one along with the uh, Smith & Wesson 17.4, I think is the model number. I've got a review on it. This Smith & Wesson Model 17, that double action, uh, six inch barrel 22, that is just an absolutely beautiful gun. But these were some of the first 22s that I grew up shooting in pistols, or revolvers rather. And yeah, there's just something, there's just something about some of these old guns. now. The Wranglers you can get at Academy right now for two hundred nine bucks. Uh, the Heritage, I think you can get those even a little bit cheaper, one seventy nine, one eighty nine. They used to run the Heritage on sale at Academy for ninety nine dollars during Christmas time, but it's been a couple of years since I've seen that. And I did pick up a Heritage or two when they had them for ninety nine. And I will say Heritage does make that new one, the Barkeep Boot with the little bitty stub barrel. I think they even make it with a bird's head grip. I like that gun, but darn it, I wish it didn't have that stupid safety on it. <laughs> Rob, if you're watching, I think you probably remember that I commented about that safety on one of your videos. Their Heritage's are, are, are fine guns. Usually the Heritage, I think, has a little bit better trigger than the Wranglers, too, out of the box. Uh, but anyway, enough about that. I just wanted to show you all this old shooting iron. It's been around since 1976. I've been around since the early 70s. So this gun is officially six or seven years uh, younger than me. But a guy can keep an eye out at a pawn shop, places like that, and you can pick these up for three to $400 sometimes if you keep an eye out for them. And to me, Man, it's worth that extra 100 bucks to do some hunting and find you an old single six like this if you've got the single action ones. But, teach their own. As always, y'all, 
Thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate every person that takes the time to click on it. Drop a comment down below. If you have any questions on this, you know, let me, let me know. I'll, I try to respond to all my comments. Click that like button. It really helps us growing YouTube channels like me. And subscribe. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. Uh, you can click that notification bell. And every time I put a, put a video out, you'll get an email saying, hey, Hibble Amusements put a video out. And that'll probably last about twice before you click off the notification. <laughs> But don't unsubscribe. Y'all be safe out there. I appreciate you watching. Take care.